Hello everyone, today we are in the Chevy Silverado and we're gonna take a look at scan tool, data displays, and PIDs. We'll talk about how to use these things, maybe some of the strategy. This truck happens to have a few problems, and so we're gonna take a look at that. So this is our 2014 Chevy Silverado. It's a 1500 model, two-wheel drive. It's got the 5.3 liter engine in it. And I've selected our Snap-on Solus Edge tool, and we've connected with just the OBD2, the global part of the software. So here I'm at my OBD2 menu. I'm gonna to go to mode one for display current data. We'll load that up. So in just the OBD2 mode, all I really get is a general PID list. I don't get the choices of engine data and those things. I just get one great big list, which can be okay. The upside with this list is that the terminology and the names for things that we see are consistent from car to car because it's OBD2. So on this, I get all sorts of information. I get my engine speed, I get different air mass inputs, throttle, lots of different things that I could utilize in order to figure out maybe what's going on with the engine. Say I had a problem or a trouble code. One of the more common places to look when I've got a drivability or a engine performance problem on a vehicle is to look at fuel trims. One of the things that we gotta keep in mind with PID information and data displays is that this list is showing me values that the PCM thinks it sees. And I use the word think just because we wanna be objective. When the PCM sees an oxygen sensor value, all it knows is the voltage that has come back on a single wire. And that's what it shows you here. And so when we look at it, we've got to keep that objective frame of mind because that value could be false. There could be a bad sensor, the wiring could be compromised in such a way that that value is skewed, or I could have a mechanical problem, say a leak at the exhaust manifold that's influencing what the O2 sensor is seeing and it's not true in terms of what is actually coming out of the combustion chamber. And so we've got to be objective, we've got to keep those things in mind and use them to our benefit as we go through the diagnostic process. Here I'm looking at the fuel trims. I've got short term bank one and two, and then long terms bank one and two. It's clear with this picture that this truck has some problems. Uh, fuel trim values, we typically look at the short and long as a group, they work together to modify a total fuel trim. And so I add them together to realize what the full and total fuel trim is for that bank. And so on this particular bank, it is at about 28 to 30 negative. That means that this vehicle's PCM is taking away about 30% of the fuel that it would otherwise do on its base calibration. If a car is taken that much away from its base calibration, that's a sign that I've got a problem. And so that's something that I've really got to look at. Typical fuel trims, my total fuel trim should be less than 10%. 10% is a normal window that can have weather, elevation, and other influences. When I get beyond 10%, that's something that I need to look after. 30% is exceptionally high. So the next thing I want to look at here is why is this so high? And so we can look at a handful of things. One of the big things that stands out is that my long-term trims are almost identical on my bank one and my bank two. My short-term trims also have fairly similar numbers and consistency. So what does that tell me? Well, on a V8 engine like this one, both banks are being controlled independently in terms of fuel. That's what I see on these. That's why I've got two sets of numbers. I've got to keep in mind that if they are showing me the same ideas, that's going to change my approach because now I've got to think about what sensors and data is the PCM using that's common to both of these banks. So on a VA engine, think about what could be common to both banks. We have lots of different sensors going on, but only a handful of them are critical in this process and only a handful of them are going to make this type of change to both banks. Oxygen sensors are unique to each bank, and so that's not something that could necessarily be the root cause here because we see the same change on both banks. If you think further forward, say like a mass airflow sensor or a MAP sensor, one of those items that does the air metering for the whole system is gonna influence both banks. And so it could be that your mass airflow sensor has an issue, MAP sensor. It could be a leak in the intake boot creating false air readings. So these are the things that I would wanna look for because they're common to both banks. 
that basic critical thinking is gonna go a long way, and it's really what makes looking at this PID information powerful.